How has Jaron Duran's approach mentally changed from last year to this year? You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to welcome you back into the Locked On Red Sox podcast, and thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I am your host, Jake Ignazuski, and today we have a very special interview with Red Sox outfielder Jaron Duran. But before we get into my conversation with Duran, I want to sort of look into his interesting journey, uh, not only as a prospect, but as a major leaguer in the Red Sox system. You know, he started out. Uh, in 2021, uh, sort of when all the hype surrounding his name uh, really started. And I remember Red Sox Twitter was posting every single one of his home runs or hits and, uh, you know, yelling from the rooftops, bring this guy up immediately. But from what usually happens with some of those younger players or those prospects who come up, they struggle when they first break the scene and they aren't able to acclimate to major league pitching as quickly as, you know, fans would hope, or sometimes the front office would hope. And, you know, that was the case for Duran in 2021 and he sort of seemed lost when he came up to the majors and really struggled uh, with not being able to be patient at the plate, have good plate discipline and was swinging a miss left and right. And then, you know, obviously 2022 happened where he ended up getting a shot for the second time in the majors was doing really well in the leadoff spot and was flourishing uh, as a major league player. And then, you know, out of nowhere, everything started to sort of collapse uh, in front of us. And, you know, not only in terms of his play, uh, but also in terms of his ability to speak with the media, his, his ability to compose himself on the field, uh, just so many different things happened with Jaron Duran last year. Uh, you know, you could you could point at the Romel Tapia play uh, where, you know, he just ended up standing there losing the ball in the sun uh, and Tapia ended up getting an inside the park grand slam. And then after that game, you know, obviously the the media sort of coverage of it, which came off from it, uh, him sort of saying, well, let's see you go out there and, and catch that baseball. And, you know, his inability to be able to speak with the media in in a way to where his name wasn't in the headlines in the very next day. And then, you know, the same thing happened, uh, you know, when he ultimately had an issue uh, with, with you know, Royals fans and up going back and forth with those fans in center field. And, you know, Alex Verdugo had to you know, sort of take him away from that situation. But all those things have happened in order for him to mature grow and improve not only as a professional baseball player but as a person and it's never easy for any player whether you're a prospect uh or or you know you could even look at celebrities as well to be able to grow in front of an audience or grow in the spotlight you know you could even I can't believe I'm making this comparison, but look at Justin Bieber, uh, you know, throughout his time in his music career and being a celebrity, all the mistakes that he made in front of the media, in front of the spotlight, and everybody was judging him and assuming who he was as a person, as a human being. And, you know, we heard about Jaron Duran's uh, mental struggles throughout last season and, and being able to really fit into the Red Sox clubhouse and being able to feel like he could be himself uh, in that clubhouse and when playing in the majors compared to how he played freelessly and uh, had a smile on his face and was himself down with the Woo Sox in AAA. And it's been really nice to see uh, a different version of Jaron Duran in 2023, at least early on. Now, like I said, with 2022, he started that stint very hot. He, he was uh, catching a lot of people's eyes. There was a lot of people who were very excited about him. And I feel like there's a lot of fans who are, are semi feeling a little bit weary uh, about this stint early on, not wanting to buy in too quickly, not wanting to get too excited too early because they know, and, and, you know, potentially 
a month or two, knock on wood, everything could hit the fan. And, uh, you know, he, he could you know stop hitting productively against major league pitching. You know, may, maybe some of the immaturity could come out. I hope not. But it's been really nice to see, um, like I said, a very different version of Jaron Duran, not only uh, as a baseball player, but also as a person as well. And, you know, starting with what we've seen from Duran as a baseball player with the Red Sox, struggled a little bit to begin the season, was batting 193 down in Worcester, uh, had his ups and downs, not only at the plate, but defensively as well. And there's a lot of people who brought up after Adam Duvall uh, got injured that once the Red Sox get past, you know, the the stretch of lefty starters, we could probably see Jaron Duran get a shot uh, in center field. And, you know, I remember putting out a tweet after the Duval injury happened and, you know, bringing that up. And there's a lot of people who were like, no, no, no shot. Uh, you know, let's look at his stats right now in Worcester. You know, he needs more time. And in my mind, I, I feel like, uh, you know, you can't always read too, too much into the statistics of what a guy has done in AAA. Yes, sometimes it paints a, a, a clear picture of who the player could be when you call him up to the majors. But I, I feel like it's really situational. And with this situation for Duran, I feel like he was getting unlucky, unlucky a lot in Worcester. And maybe the you know, statistics weren't on his side and showing the the full clear picture of how he was actually performing. And we've seen a much more improved, a much more patient, a much more confident player uh, in Jaron Duran throughout his short stint thus far um, in 2023 uh, in the majors. And so far is hitting very good. And he, he's sort of replicating the success that we saw in spring training prior to when he went over to the WBC. I remember so many people were raving about his new swing, his new approach as well at the plate and his ability to really drive the ball uh, and, and get on base seamlessly without, you know, always trying to hit a home run. Like it seemed like he, he was not only trying to do in 21, but also in 2022 during his stints with the Red Sox. But it, it it's really cool to see him having the ability to, have that continued success from spring training and now into his you know third stint with the Red Sox batting 333 he's been nine for 27 so far at the plate has hit zero home runs but you know as I just said it's been really nice to see him not fully focusing on trying to hit home runs and I feel like especially early on in, in this third stint it's just really important for him to continue to get more comfortable with major league pitching and find his right pitches and you know the home runs are going to come and we we've seen so many times with a lot of young players when they try to force hitting a home run or force power and especially with duran with his guns you know he's ginormous he's huge he's got way bigger biceps than he did last year you know according to a lot of people who have been up close with him and it's nice that he's not always trying to hit a home run and you know just the focus is getting on base. And uh, I, I think especially with the speed that he showcases and that he gives uh, this Red Sox lineup and team, it just makes them a lot more diverse in their ability on how they're able to manipulate uh, offensively. And, you know, we even saw where he hit a single and turned it into a, a, a double, you know, it was a, it was a blue pit, you know, into center field. And just because the center fielder didn't get the ball, in quick enough, Duran was already sliding in at second. And, you know, we've already seen him, uh, you know, steal two bases as well. And given the Red Sox a lot more speed on the base pass, which has, you know, helped him score a lot of runs in the process. And I, I feel like anytime uh, there, there's a speed straw on the base path, and not only makes the pitcher a little bit more nervous, but also the fielders as well. And I, I feel like also what we've seen from him uh, defensively is the biggest improvement, you know, especially in center field. You know, we always go back to the Romel Tapia play of, you know, his inability to be able to play competent center field, especially with how tough it is to play center field at Fenway Park and how important it is to be able to have good range as well as, uh, you know, make good pass to the ball, especially in a center field like like Fenway Park. Uh, but it's not easy to play center field in, in the majors. And, you know, that's why you saw the Red Sox a lot of times during the spring, you know, put Duran in left field uh, and he had a lot of success there. But then they 
put him right back in the center field and wanted him to get work there when he was sent down to Worcester um, after not making the opening day roster. And you know, we saw him make a spectacular play uh, in game one of the Orioles series. And it, it was a, a catch that I haven't seen him make uh, ever since watching him. And, you know, it, it it's tough for me to think back when, when a Red Sox center fielder has made one of those types of plays outside of Kiki Hernandez and Jackie Bradley Jr. And especially being put in a box with the, or a conversation with those two guys, you're definitely doing something right. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, there's one or two plays, you know, down the stretch in, in his stint. Uh, and, and hopefully it's a continuous stint for Duran that we, we see him make some defensive miscues, but all I care about is just, you know, continuous improvement. I feel like, and w- with a young guy like him, not only continuous improvement in terms of, his physical performance, but also his mental performance. You know, he, he seems, especially when I talk to him, he seems like a lot more mature, um, a lot more aware of what he's saying, uh, as well as, you know, a lot more aware of uh, what is important, especially when being a professional baseball player, not only focusing on your own performance, but also how are you able to lift up your teammates and understanding, you know, baseball is a game of failure. And I, I think, him having the ability to have mentors around him, you know, like an Alex Verdugo, like a Christian Arroyo, you know, then you could also say being able to come up with a guy like Tristan Cassis, who, you know, a lot of people have, you know, pointed out as, you know, one of the most mature prospects that they've seen uh, come up in a while. And, you know, I I would agree with that. And being able to have those people around him definitely helps a lot. And I, I think that is one of the biggest reasons why we've seen him having a lot more fun, you know, I remember when Yoshida ended up hitting his grand slam a few days ago, you saw him, you know, doing the dumbbells and, you know, big smile on his face. And that's all you want to see from a guy like Duran. And, uh, you know, it, it, it also shows in the way that he's uh, changing his perspective about uh, different decisions that the Red Sox have made, especially early on in the season when he didn't meet the opening day roster. I think his answer was perfect uh, on his feelings about that. He said, yeah, it's hard because it's baseball. It can be a real negative game, but you just have to try and take the positive out of everything. Everything. So that's what I'm trying to do. Stay positive. It happens. It's baseball. It's business. But I just need to keep working. I think that's the perfect mindset. And if he is able to continue to have that positive outlook, uh, not only as, as a professional baseball player, but as a person, uh, it, it could really take him a long way. And I, I think Jaron Duran is in the perfect spot. He's in the best spot, in my opinion, that we've seen him like I said, not only physically, but also mentally. And uh, we all know uh, baseball is 90% mental, 10% physical. And especially when, when you're able to have a strong mental game, that helps you go a long way. And I speak a little bit more with Jaron about how his approach in terms of the mental game has really changed and what goes into his routines mentally to really be able to get help him get in the zone and also be able to help him continue to explore his personal development journey, explore um, how to continue to improve his mental health. But before we get into my conversation with Jaron Duran, I just want to take a second to talk to you about So Rare. So our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game in a marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 major league teams. It's unlike any other fantasy baseball platform, so rare managers truly own their fantasy experience by collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or loss, you still own your cards and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and assessing the next level competitions and rewards. Another great thing about So Rare, and this is something that made me want to get involved even more, is that MLB All-Stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez are going to be serving as brand ambassadors, and they're going to be featured in multiple of the community events throughout the MLB season. And so if you want to get involved with So Rare and also find fun ways to get involved in a revolutionary fantasy baseball game, go over to so rare.com slash locked on that's spelled s o r a r e.com to draft your team of free player cards set your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards again that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today 
And also, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. And so, especially with how well the Red Sox have been doing, grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win especially with how well Rafael Devers has been hitting the baseball. You could do a prop for a Devers home run, you know, Devers hit as well. Uh, then you could also look at, uh, you know, a guy like Masataki Yoshida recording a hit. He's on fire right now. Definitely slam that one. And so don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of major league baseball. And now, Let's get into my conversation with Jaron Duran. So I saw that, you know, you changed your stance a little bit and had a lot more of like play present, play discipline throughout spring training. I'm curious if there's anything that you worked on throughout the off season that really be able, that really helped you to be so successful throughout spring training play. Uh, I would say it was more of a mental approach, you know, just clearing my head more mentally from the off season to prepare for the season. And, you know, speaking about that mental aspect, I'm somebody who's really into the mental side of the game. I'm, I'm curious, you know, what sort of things you did throughout the offseason to strengthen your mental approach and if you have any sort of, like, routines before or after the game. Um, I usually read a book. I have this one specific book I read. And then um, I just try to tell myself every day, like, this game is a game of failure and I'm going to fail when I succeed. And then I try and focus on my teammates so that it kind of, goes away from the fact of I'm not doing so well if like Fitzy or Nico or any of them are doing really good I, I can pump them up and it takes away from me and it makes it about the team and you know you spoke about that book is there any other books that you like to read I remember the last time when we talked last year you like comic books a lot mm -hmm. so curious if you know you do some comic book reading or if it's more of like the you know mental health like per, um personal development sort of books that you like to read yeah um it's called the the horse the fox the mole and the boy i've heard that one yeah that's the one i've been reading lately really appreciate it thank no you problem. i hope that you did enjoy my conversation with jaron duran and i don't know about you i i'm trying to figure out how heim bloom does this all makes all these different moves i know especially for him bringing up jaron duran and figuring out the best time to do it probably wasn't super easy but if you want to figure out and experience being a major league gm the best place to do that is to go over to ultimate pro baseball gm which is one of the coolest games and apps that i've played in a very long time you can honestly feel like you're a gm and you're helping build a franchise to have a sustained dynasty you can not only hire the right coaches and staff you manage the team's finances while also navigating them through free agency. So whether you're, you know, trying to get the cheaper players or you want to be like Steve Cohen and, you know, just spend tons of money and try and get all the different superstars. And then you can also scout and draft players if you want to also try and go through a rebuilding process or just continue to build up for sustainable uh, winning but then I think the funnest part is being able to manage the difficult personalities. You know, you can have the leader, you can have the cancer of the clubhouse and being able to figure out a way to, you know, manage those different personalities and, and see how they either dictate into W's or losses. Same with the injuries. We know how tough it is to manage those types of injuries, especially with how the Red Sox have had to deal with a lot of injuries thus far this season. It's never easy, but it does make the game a lot more fun and, that's what I think is so fun about pro all, pro baseball GM is you go through the ups and downs of the season and it really makes you feel like you are a major league general manager. I think the best part about it too is that you can play offline wherever you want on the go and it's r realistic as well. And so if you want to check it out, Locked On Red Sox listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com. Scan the code if you're watching over on YouTube or if you're listening to it, you can look it up on the App Store. That's probaseballgm.com. Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. So I hope that you did enjoy my conversation with Jaron Duran. And one thing that I wish that I asked, you know, reflecting on it, is how those different teammates like Alex Verdugo or Christian Arroyo really helped him be able to learn more how to 
be a successful major league baseball player. And, you know, not only helped him as a player, but also as a person. And, you know, some of the advice that some of those players gave to him, uh, who knows if he really would have, you know, told me anytime, you know, you hear, uh, a, a reporter or somebody, you know, ask a player about, you know, different things that, you know, players have, you know, said to them or the advice that they've given them. They don't always, you know, explain everything or, or give you the full details, but I, I, I think it would have been interesting to hear about that. Uh, I hope that you got a little bit of insight from, uh, you know, my conversation with Duran. And I look forward to giving you the ability to hear more different perspectives from, from these different players. Cause you know, that's one thing that I try to do when, you know, I get the opportunity to talk to these different guys is try and come up with questions in, uh, you know, topics that, you know, not every other beat writer, or, you know, person who's covering the Red Sox is talking about and um, being able to look more, at least for Duran, the mental side was really interesting for me, especially with all the issues that he had last season and how he's, you know, really tried to reflect and, and change and improve himself from last season into this season. And so uh, I, I look forward to being able to post more of these interviews and, and we're going to be dropping one more player interview during this week. And from what the poll looks like over on Twitter, it seems like Nick York is going to be that second player. So that episode is going to be dropping on Friday. So definitely make sure to tune into that. And if you want to be more involved, you know, with polls or I bet you're thinking, Jake, where the heck is this poll? Well, I posted it over on Locked on Red Sox Twitter. If you want to follow us over there, it's LO underscore Red Sox. You can also have the ability to you know, be involved in different episodes and, you know, have the opportunity to not only, you know, share your opinion and we react to it on an episode or, you know, if we have a player or a reporter or just personality on, you know, there's a lot of times where we'll ask if you want us to talk about any topics or any questions that you might have, and then, you know, we involve them in the episode. And so we try to make this the most fan engaging Red Sox podcast that there is out there. So if you want to get involved, like I said, follow us over on Twitter. It's LO underscore Red Sox. Also follow myself, it's at Jake Iggy and also my co-host Lauren is La 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 Three Laws Lauren for with four R's. But as always, we want to thank everybody for making Lockdown Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Now, for my everydayers, make sure to check out tomorrow's episode where we have a very special guest in Red Seat Radio. Him and I are going to be breaking down uh, the Red Sox game three against the Baltimore Orioles. But super excited to see how that one plays out. But as always, if you want to stay tuned with everything that's happening regarding the Boston Red Sox, we post five days a week, so make sure to subscribe over on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. But we hope everybody has a great rest of your day. I greatly appreciate you tuning in. We'll end this episode how we always end it. Keep the faith, stay positive, and let's go Sox!